What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Figure Creations channel, and today I'm going to be hosting the 2023 LEGO Awards. I am so excited to be doing this. I'm so honored that they chose me to do it. Also, all these takes in this video are my personal opinions based on what I think the best and worst sets are. Uh, I've chose five to nominate for each category that the ones that you see on your screen right now. And be sure before you get into it to like and subscribe and let me know in the comment section below which sets you believe fit these categories the best for the year of 2023. So let's get right into it with the first category, which is the best $0 to $25 set of 2023. Now, when it came down to this, I decided to see what was the best value for this small price range. So this is someone who's not looking to spend a lot of money on Legos, and I came up with these five sets. For $20, it is the 332nd Ahsoka's Clone Trooper Battle Pack. For also $20, the Dilophosaurus Ambush, the Imperium Dragon Hunter Hound for $20, the 501st Clone Troopers Battle Pack for $20, the Too Fast, Too Furious Nissan Skyline for $25. Now, in each set specifically, um, I'll go through each one of them. The 332nd Ahsoka's Clone Trooper Battle Pack had four great minifigures, even though they didn't utilize all the helmet holes. I think the build is one of the best Battle Pack builds we've ever gotten. Barely any studs showing such a great design and executed very well. Now, the Dilophosaurus Ambush is part of the Jurassic Park sets, which I'm much more of a fan than of the Jurassic World, so that's probably why it's on here. Great value for what you're getting, probably the best valued set of that line. Then, the Imperium Dragon Hunter Hound came with two ninja and one bad guy, and a main um, build that was used a lot in the first season of Ninjago Dragons Rising, so that's why I think it's such a great value. Um, then the 501st Clone Troopers Battle Pack, utilizing all the helmet holes, also a very solid Battle Pack build. Um, and finally, the Nissan Skyline, very, very good Speed Champion set. I'm not a huge fan of um, Speed Champions in general, but if it's a Fast and Furious car, I think it is executed very well, um, and I'm excited about that one. So, out of all these sets, I do have to say the award goes to the 501st Clone Troopers Battle Pack. Um, out of all of the sets, I think it does the best job with quality quantity of minifigures and quality of build um also utilizing all the helmet holes except the one on the captain which i can completely forgive is a great way of using and i think this was the set i think i bought two or three of those this year plan to do more before they retire and this is my personal favorite zero dollar to 25 dollar set of the year now let's go into another similar price range but we're going to the best brickheads of 2023 starting off with Gandalf the Grey and Balrog, which I know was a fan favorite, very popular one. The Sonic the Hedgehog, that's new. The Battle of Endor Heroes, which came with five brickheads. The Eevee and Wally brickheads. And the Kingsley Shacklebolt and Nymphadora Tonks brickheads. Um, now, of course, the G Gandalf and Balrog was part of the Lord of the Rings bring back, where they brought back a bunch of um, new sets for the new Lord of the Rings theme to go along with the Rivendell. Um, so I didn't, I didn't want to include all of those. I just picked the one that I thought was the best. Then the Sonic the Hedgehog, which I, another one of the fan favorites brought back with the new Sonic uh, line of sets. Then the Battle of Endor Heroes, very, very solid Star Wars Brickheads, which I'm really happy about um, for the 20th and, or 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi. And last, uh, not lastly, Eevee and Wally, which is a 20th anniversary uh, Disney set. I believe that's what it is. Uh, let me, let me, let me just check. To make sure. Oh no, it's it's a, a hundred year anniversary of Disney set. That's what it is. Um, and then Kingsley Shacklebolt and Nymphadora Tonks, part of the Harry Potter brickheads that came out. I think they both turned out fairly well. Um, but just saying, probably not gonna win. I, I'm going to lean definitely more towards the Wally brickheads and the Gandalf the Grey and Balrog. And I think overall the entire year, I have to say the Gandalf the Grey and Balrog. This has been the most sold Brickheads, I believe, ever. Such a good idea of a Brickheads um, to get a character we would probably never get in Balrog to pair it with such an iconic character in Gandalf the Grey. So those, in my opinion, uh, is the best Brickheads set of the year. Now let's get into some more heftier prices, going to the $25 to $50 range. Five more sets, the Batman, Batmobile versus the Joker Chase, the Spider Tank, the Escape from the Lost Tomb, Hogwarts Room of Requirement, the Hulkbuster Battle for Wakanda. Now, all of these sets are in the, the same similar price range between 40 and 50 bucks, um, and I think all of them do a great job of representing that price, giving you the right value, the right amount of figures 
for what you're paying for because that is a big part of what I'm spending my Legos my Lego money on is to get the best value for what I'm spending otherwise I'll just wait for it to go on a sale the Batmobile uh, is a one of the if not, I think it is the best Batmobile in my opinion that we've ever gotten such a great and sleek build paired with two great minifigures same thing with the spider tank perfectly executed I believe I don't think there are any problems with this set such a fun building experience um, even though the legs are a little repetitive, they don't even last for that long, so I'm fine with it. Um, also, two of the best minifigures, uh, we'll, we'll see them, we might see them coming later on, but the Mandalorian, that extra helmet printing, takes it million levels above what it already was, and the Bo-Katan is such an incredible minifigure with arm printing, leg printing, the greatest helmet printing we've ever seen. Now, the Escape from the Lost Tomb is a great value for what you're getting with the new Indiana Jones sets coming out this year. We did see some of these new ones. One of them even got canceled, but this is one of the ones that survived, and I do think it's going to do a good job. Even you can get it cheaper for $40 um, for 600, uh, 600 pieces and four minifigures. It's a great value for what you're getting and such an iconic scene from that movie. Now we have the Room of Requirement, which is one of the best Deathly Hallows sets we've ever gotten because uh, we don't have actually actually have that many of them. So great to represent that scene. And then the Hulkbuster is, in my opinion, the best Hulkbuster we've ever seen. Great value, four figures, really good job, executed well. Now, I think that it's going to come down to probably these three sets, the Spider Tank, the Escape from the Lost Tomb, and the Hulkbuster and right now, at this moment, I thought I was going to go with the Spider Tank, but at this moment, I'm actually leaning for the Hulkbuster. So this is my pick for the best $25 to $50 set, the $50 Hulkbuster Battle for Wakanda. Now, the previous count is a little low, but the four figures definitely show it. And I think it is the best Hulkbuster. It does do the best job of representing the set or, or the, the thing in the movie. So that's my pick for the best $50 set of 2023. Now let's move on to the $50 to $75 range where we have some really hard hitting sets starting off with the Heat Wave, Transforming Lava Dragon, the Up House, which is a fan favorite set, the Executor Super Star Destroyer, the Captain Rex Helmet, and the TIE Bomber. Now probably the best value of, the, of this price range of sets, you're getting the most pieces for the least amount of money. And I think all of these sets definitely did a good job. I didn't want to include too many helmets, so I picked the best one, in my opinion, which was Captain Rex. Uh, well, you could argue for the Cody. I think it does a good job of what it is trying to represent. The TIE Bomber, another unexpected gem of 2023. Such a good set with three great figures, one that we never thought we'd ever get just because she's just a book character. Now, another set with no mini figures, it's the Executor Super Star Destroyer, although this is a fan favorite one that's my personal favorite. Definitely suggest picking this up if you're just a Star Wars fan in general or just a Lego fan. It's an 18 plus set. It's so incredible for display. Now, we also have the Up House, which was so well received. Um, really, really interesting set that we never thought we would get. Uh, so many mocks of this, and I think it was executed perfectly. Now we have also the Transforming Dragon, which gives a lot of playability and a lot of uh, unique Ninjago Dragons Rising figures. Now, my personal favorite out of all of these is going to be the Executor Super Star Destroyer. I personally own this set, and I think it's a great build. Uh, lots of Easter eggs in the inside and such a great display piece, like I said. Great value for what you're buying, so I definitely suggest picking this one up for the price. That is the... 50 to 75 dollar sets now we're getting into a little bit more expensive the 75 to 100 dollar now there are five sets here um let's start off here with the avatar set i wanted to include one of them and i don't think this is going to win uh but i definitely wanted to include one of them because i think all of them are great sets just the value of them didn't really add up to what i wanted to be included so that's probably not going to win but i definitely just think it deserves some recognition that's the poly Payukan and toolkin crab suit uh, the Temple of the Dragon Energy Cores, S maybe it looks a lot bigger from the outside. It's, the interior is not that detailed, but I think it's a great display piece um, and super excited to see it in Ninjago Ra Dragons Rising Season or Part 2. Now we have the Mandalorian Fang Fighter versus TIE Interceptor. Very, very good set, um, even though it's not really accurate and a little bit lacking on the minifigures. I think it is a great set. Now we have the Endor Speeder Chase Diorama. Really good job of representing the scene, and I think it is definitely one of the most underrated sets of the year. 
Now we have the Avengers Quinjet, which is uh, another Overlook set. I think it looks really, really good, and the stand um, gives it great display value. My personal favorite, I think I'm leaning towards the Mandalorian Fang Fighter versus TIE Interceptor or the Temple of the Dragon Energy Cores. And I think Star Wars has gotten enough recognition. I think the best set here is the Ninj Ninjago set. Out of all the figures, it gives so many characters that are important to the story. I'm so excited to see what the other sets for 2024 are for Ninjago because the designers did an excellent job of making this set and taking it from the screen into the build form. So I definitely suggest it's a great value to pick this set up whenever you can. The next price range is going to be $100 to $200. This is the heavy hitters. I believe this is the best price, the best five sets of the year in this price range. Such good sets. Starting off with the Viking Village. This is a Lego idea set. Very, very under the radar set, but I think it turned out really, really incredible. Um, maybe a little bit lacking on the figures, but the building techniques that were used is really great, and it's a great display piece. Now we have a set I recently picked up, which is the Spider-Man Final Battle. I was very down on this set when it originally got revealed, but now having it in hand, I'm excited to see what happens next. And the addition of the Sandman part to go on top of it really adds an extra value to the set that already is, that sold out, was I think the only set to so sell out when it came out. Um, now we have the Ghost and Phantom 2, uh, one of the best sets of the year. Um, despite my gripes with the Phantom um, 2 build, I think it is probably the best set of the year. Not giving too much away. Value-wise, it's it's really, really great set. Now we also have the Temple of the Golden Idol. Um, very fair to give this one a good job because of all the play features and displayability that it provides um, for one of the most iconic scenes in cinema history. And lastly, the New Republic Ewing versus Shin Hati Starfighter. Very underrated set. Uh, great figures, great builds. But I think, like I said before, it's got to go to the Ghost and Phantom 2. Very, very good representation. Other than a couple inaccuracies in the front. Building experience, 10 out of 10. Figures, very good job with all of them. So that's why this is the best uh, $100 to $200 set. The most expensive sets of the year tend to be very, very good. That's why I have the $200 plus section decked out in some of the most incredible builds we've ever seen. As LEGO progresses, the build techniques and the pieces get more and more intricate and more and more amazing. So that's why these five sets are on this list, starting off with the Avengers Tower. Very, very late addition to 2023. Mini figures, everyone was like, oh, well, they're not that great, but I think this build carries everything. So many layers, so many floors on this, this building, so many different ways to display your figures, to display this set. It's really, really incredible what they did with some of the building techniques uh, on the, the entire building, and it's also modular, so that's just incredible. Now we also have another massive set, the Venator Class Republic Attack Cruiser. Never, no one ever thought coming into 2023 that this is the set that we would get out of here. And now we also got a Captain Rex minifigure. That was not that well received, but I think it's pretty good. Very, very solid set. The Ninjago City Markets, a new addition to the Ninjago City line. Very, very great. Um, also, the Lord of the Rings Rivendell, which got so much hype coming into the beginning of the year. And I'm so happy uh, that we're getting more Lord of the Rings sets. One of my first videos ever got did so well. It was about this set. And finally, we have the Modular Jazz Club, which another great building set, um, but probably not going to win. Also, just wanted to include it here. It really comes down to three sets here. These three pretty much represent my entire channel. Some of the, my best videos have been on the Venator Class Republic Attack Cruiser and the Lord of the Rings Rivendell. But I do have to give it to the Avengers Tower, my personal favorite set of the year. A set I've yet to pick up just because of its hefty price, but I think it's worth every penny if you get the chance to. Definitely buy it before it retires, uh, even though it just came out. I will find a way. This is my pick for the best $200 plus set of the year. Now we have one, or actually two more things. The worst set of 2023 I've 
five nominees. I just wanted to include one dream set. I was not that impressed with what they came what they came up with. Very creative, but I don't think it matches well with my style and what I would want from a Lego set. So that's just here to fill up that five spot. Then same thing with the Avengers Advent Calendar. No unique minifigures. No interesting builds whatsoever. Very very disappointing. Um, the Millennium Falcon Holiday Dam Diorama. I gave my thoughts on. Very, very disappointing that this is the only uh, sequel set we've gotten in five years. And it was just this random thing from a holiday special. And then these two sets that I made videos on. The Batman Pursuit uh, and the Joker and the Iron Man Hulkbuster versus Thanos. $27 four plus sets with 50 pieces each. These are horrendous. And I think the only reason why I'm picking one over the other is because one has less pieces. So it's going to be the Batman versus uh, the Batman Pursuit. Uh, versus the Joker. Very, very disappointing set. This is not what we should be giving to our kids to build Lego. This is not a good representation of Batman in any way, shape, or form. So that's why this set is being picked as the worst set of the year. Finally, we are moving on to the last category, which is the best minifigure. And the nominees for the best minifigure of 2023 Ahsoka from the Ahsoka's T6 Jedi Shuttle, Wolverine from the Marvel Series 2 CMF, Bo-Katan for the Spider Droid, Vision from the Avengers Tower, and Elrond from Rivendale. The winner of the best minifigure of 2023 is Wolverine from the Marvel CMF Series 2. This CMF Series is one of the best we've ever gotten when it comes to quantity, representation of all the different Marvel properties, and this figure just idealizes all of the detail and things that came with that series. Side leg printing, arm printing, leg printing, printing on every part of the minifigure, so, so great. And this is my pick for the best minifigure of 2023. And I think it was also your pick for the best minifigure of 2023 when I did that Marvel CMF bracket battle. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and have a great day.